Uh, hello and welcome to our presentation on the work we've been doing with the Endure project on monitoring visitor behaviour on the dunes. Firstly, I just wanted to introduce us. I'm Dan and this is Michael. Hello. And I promise these photos weren't taken this morning, it's just a coincidence we're still wearing the same shirt. <laughs> Um, we are we are Uniotech. We are a IoT solution provider. Uh, we offer a catalogue of hardware and applications that all feed into our unified software platform. We specialise in using sensors that operate in the LP1 technology, which stands for a low power wide area network, and Michael will talk a bit more about that later. And we mainly operate in the environmental and utility space, with the local authorities and building management companies being our main uh, customers at the moment. So the problem, part of the Endure project is looking at ways to mitigate visitor impact on nature reservoir, uh, reservoirs and <laughs> sensitive sites along the coastal paths. This is where Uniotech came into the project. After hearing about similar work that we've been doing with the county council, we were approached to find out what we could do to help and how we could help with this problem to better understand the behaviour and movement of people in the, in the dunes and the surrounding areas. So as Dan's mentioned, uh, one of the objectives for the project was to understand the movement of visitors. And it's really important that we understood that before any interventions took place. So we wanted to install sensors before new fences or signage were installed would help us understand how people were using the space, uh, which paths they were using, whether they were straying off the designated paths. And secondly, we wanted to be able to measure a change in movement following any interventions. So the sensors were installed beforehand, and then we could monitor how the interventions affected people's behaviour in the area. So our involvement has been part of research and development for this. So we've built bespoke hardware, um, people counting devices, We've written a, a bespoke software platform as well to visualise the data. We've assisted Norfolk County Council in deploying a, a LoRaWAN network, which the uh, sensors are intended to connect to. And we've maintained regular site visits, um, checking up on devices and collecting data regularly. So the locations we're covering, you probably, the maps probably aren't very clear on the screen, but they're um, Horsey Gap and Winston. Uh, both sites we're looking to capture visitors as they leave the car park area. And we want to understand whether they follow the designated paths or if they stray off into different areas across the dunes. So I mentioned the network, the LoRaWAN network. Norfolk County Council are in the process of rolling out a, a county-wide network which would support um, sensors like these people counters. Um, LoRaWAN devices are typically battery powered. So they, they have life, so battery lifetime measured in years normally rather than days, which is great. Um, you can get really long range from them as well. So you can deploy a, a gateway for the network in a building and you might get about 500 metres range around that. But if you've got one deployed conveniently on top of County Hall in Norwich, you can get 20 or 30 kilometres range on a good day with those. So the data we get from these is really small packets. So it, you're not going to be getting CCTV footage or audio recordings. It's really small bits of data like counts of people, temperature readings, GPS data from assets that you've got out in the field. So as part of our, our hardware R&D, we tested a variety of sensor options. So we tried some radar devices, uh, infrared beam break sensors that have a, a transmitter on one side of the path and a receiver on the other. If you walk through the gap, you, you trigger that. And PIR sensors, which measure motion and heat. They're um, similar to the burglar alarm sensors you might have at home. So we followed an iterative design and testing process. We built uh, several variations of the hardware. Um, each time taking the developments forward into the next version. It's really important for the, the location that we had a, a weather and vandal resistant enclosure. The conditions on the dunes are pretty harsh. Electronics are not generally keen on being left in either in the sun or in the rain or in the wind. And um, visitors have a tendency to try and remove devices which are placed in their view. And with any bespoke hardware product, you have to create a bespoke firmware to, to support it as well. So this is the really low-level software that runs on the device. And that helps us to interpret the output from the, the particular sensor that we're using and then log that data in a, a way that's useful to us and transmit it back over the LoRaWAN network. In parallel to the hardware development, we also had software research and development, with the first obstacle being, what is the data going to look like? 
as Michael just said, we had to write bespoke firmware, which means we had the luxury of deciding that ourselves, and we could choose exactly what format the data would be in when it got sent to us or saved to the SD card. Uh, we then had a number of meetings with our Endure project point of contact and our design team to figure out what is the best way to display the data. Who will need to access the data and what does that look like for them? But from Uniotech's point of view, the main thing I wanted to know was what makes this a complete solution? Sometimes it's very helpful just having data on a screen, but you want to be able to see a vi visual representation of that data, what it really means at a glance to be able to call this a complete solution. So the first phase of our um, development process was to build a prototype of the hardware. As you can see on the picture there, it's not a particularly pretty looking device, but it allowed us to quickly test the sensor technology, um, get it out and, and see what, what, how it worked. So this particular device has a, a PIR sensor um, and it's basically a data logger. So every time that sensor is activated, it logs the, the time of the activation to a file on an SD card. And that allowed us to then review those logs and use that data to inform the development of the algorithms for the, the firmware that would be on the future devices to allow us to remove duplicate entries and periods where somebody stands in front of the sensor. You don't want it to record 100 times for that. So that was, uh, that was a really important part of the development process. So second phase was packaging that product up into something that we could deploy out on the dunes. So we've got our waterproof enclosure, it's IP67 rated, and can be nicely hidden away on the back of a sign where um, members of the public aren't going to be immediately drawn to it. Um, at this point, it's still a, a data logging device. There's no network connectivity in this one. So we're visiting monthly um, to check on the state of the device, make sure it's still working, hasn't been vandalized, and collect the data. And that data goes into the first iteration of our um, online dashboard, which you can see here screenshot of there. This was quite a basic one, just showed a few graphs and, and gave the opportunity for the project team to download the data for other processing. And then the third phase, we were combining the learnings from our previous efforts. So we came up with a, a completely new hardware design that had the best features and some improvements. So you can see a picture of the, the board in, in manufacturing there. Um, so key features here, we added bi-directional counting. So the first sensor just had a single um, PIR sensor. This one has two, so it can tell the direction that people are passing the device. We added a much larger battery capacity. So we found that in high footfall areas, the, uh, the smaller battery didn't last as long as we would like. And we added the LoRaWAN connectivity. So these devices have a, a radio module inside them that allows them to report back their data every hour. We also switched to a new, um, more robust enclosure. So the plastic box there is easier for maintenance, it's got stainless steel screws that don't rust, much better quality for a salty, harsh environment. And the key feature here was we've integrated it into the Uniotech hub, so you've got a much better range of data visualization options. So the Uniotech hub is our in-house platform that unifies all of our applications together. It allows all of our LoRaWAN de devices, either online or offline, to have their data be uploaded or shared to. It allows for you to query, represent, share, and view your data however you like to across all the widgets that we've en enabled. For the Endure project, we have made bespoke widgets, and the most, well, the most beautiful one is the directional <laughs> map right there. Alex was quite influential in this one. It was his idea to have the data represented this way. And as you can see, for every activation, left or right, it shows you in an arrow which way is the biggest, in colours as well, and it also lives updates when new data comes in. So it is a real-time representation of who is walking what way, where the sensors are kept. So this leads to findings. So, as Michael said earlier, the key part of this project is to measure the, the improvement after the interventions have been made. And as you can see here from this graph, there is an immediate impact after the signage and fencing was installed on the week beginning the 17th of February. On Sunday the 16th, there is 192 activations. And then on Sunday the 23rd, a week later, there is only 31. This is a decrease of over 83%, showing that the fentage and, uh, fencing, uh, fencing and signage have worked together. Uh, all of the other sensors in close proximity did not lose their counts across the same time as well. So some of the insights we've got for the project. 
we, as Dan's mentioned, the, the interventions made by the project team did have a significant effect on the, uh, the number of visitors straying off the path. We found that when we install the sensors, the location you pick for them is really important. Um, the PIR sensors detect people by the difference between your body heat and the background temperature. So if you point them directly into the sun, they don't work. <laughs> um, so there's some, some careful uh, choices of locations um, helped us reduce the, the error rates on those. Uh, we built an offline mode into the devices, so although they have LoRaWAN network connectivity capability, um, they also log all of the data onto an SD card, and we can collect that manually whenever we want to. Um, and so this meant that at Winston, where we, we weren't able to get the LoRaWAN network coverage in place, we could still log the data and collect it as we needed. And of course, COVID-19 has had a significant impact on um, all of our projects, um, particularly electronics manufacturing. There's a, a global shortage of electronics components, which has led to us needing to redesign the product a couple of times to meet um, the, the available products on the market. Um, and that's had a significant impact on the, on the manufacturing capabilities for this. So what's next for the project? Uh, we will continue to monitor the rollout of the network across Norfolk, and the moment we can, we will connect the devices to the LoRaWAN network. We will continue to host the data and the visualisation platform and share it with the stakeholders, whoever they may be. Uh, we aim to improve the hardware. Uh, as Michael just said, the chip shortage hasn't helped and we've had to make more designs, so this will keep rolling through. And one of the big takeaways is to take everything that we've learned and roll out this technology into future projects moving forward. So I would just like to say... On behalf of myself, Michael, and Uniotech, thank you for your time here today, and thank you for letting us be involved in the Endure project, and thank you for putting up with us. It's been a little while since we've done a presentation, so sorry about that. <laughs> if you have any questions, please let us know, and we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.